I was born at home in Doylestown, Wisconsin, uh, December 7th, 1937, to Ulrich and Martha Stadler. My father came from Switzerland and uh, settled up in the Doylestown area. There was a cheese factory up at Doylestown, and he wanted to be a cheesemaker. There was just the farmhouse. It was a, a stucco, old, big farmhouse. Of course, it had to be with seven children. <laughs> and uh, the neighbors all got together at that time to do um, harvesting of crops. And then they decided they had to build a barn. And they raised a barn. It was a group of just neighbors and and my dad, neighbors helping neighbors, which doesn't seem to be going on much anymore like that today. So my father and my mother divorced when I was probably five years old, probably in between when we didn't have any supervision in our house as far as a grandma or a mother, but anyway, we were trying to heat water on a wood stove to do dishes. And, I don't know, I guess we were all pretty stupid and we put the covers, we had honey pails and had water in them, put them on the stove to heat and had the covers sealed on tight. And they evidently got pretty hot because when we pried the cover off the... <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, fortunately neither one of us got burned really bad, but we had burns on our face and and of course dad wasn't at home at the time so Clarence had to run up to the neighbor to get because you know you didn't have 911 or <laughs> anything like that back then and he had to run up to the neighbor to get the neighbor to come and help me I don't remember if babe had to but I had the, at that time instead of leaving the op leaving it open they wrapped it all up in bandages and so I looked like I was a mummy. All I was out was my mouth and my nose and my eyes and <laughs> until it healed and so then Grandma Stadler came to live with us and of course she spoke very little English, mostly German. So we didn't you know, we couldn't understand her very well and that caused a lot of problems with with uh, <laughs> what, what we were supposed to do and where we were supposed to be at. <laughs> of course, we lived on a farm, and so we had cows and a garden, and so we normally always had plenty of food to eat, maybe not what most kids would think was good food to eat, but <laughs> not too many treats or too much candy, but <laughs> we had plenty of food to eat. I was born in 1951 in Gary, Indiana. I was one of eight, and I was one of two that were actually, my mother actually had in the hospital. Her other six kids and my grandmother delivered at home. So uh, it caused a very strange relationship, strange relationship between my mother and I. Uh, that and the fact that she didn't know who my father was. She had eight kids by seven different men, and I was the one that she didn't know who my actual father was. So uh, it, it, it made for a very strained relationship because I found out later that one of the reasons that she didn't tolerate me very much was because I was a cesarean birth. And uh, to her, I had ruined her body. Cause she had this big, back then they did cesareans, you had this long scar down your body. So uh, in her mind, I had ruined her body, but I found that out years later from my grandmother. My grandmother uh, raised chickens in our front, front yard in the city. So we were those kids who had their chickens run around the yard, but everybody was always trying to get a chicken, you know, trying to get my mom, my grandmother to give them a chicken, you know, or they came to our house because we worked in the fields. This guy had, uh, we call it the fields, but it was like a, it was more than a garden because he grew rows of 
all kinds of vegetables, potatoes, onions, beans, cabbage, beets, all that stuff. And so we worked, my grandmother worked for him, so therefore we worked for him. And all the way, all during the summer, all the way till October, that's when we would pick the last potatoes and onions and beans and stuff. And what he would do is my grandmother would have to pick so much for his store, and then we get to take so much home. So we always had lots of food, vegetables and stuff, plus she canned all kinds of fruits, peaches, pears. We always had fruit and stuff, so people would come, you know, but they, the kids would make fun of us, but, you know, they didn't want food. They want to come to the house and eat, so it's kind of crazy. But from the time I was, as I can remember, six, probably about five or six, we would come home from school and go work in the fields, picking potatoes, onions, whatever was the food of the day. And all through the summer we would do that. And uh, the only day we didn't work was Sunday because we spent most of Sunday in church. It was every day, you know, having to work every day. And then you get 50 cents at the end of the week, 50 cents to do what you want. So I buy comic books. And uh, this is how I met my husband. I was six years old and his, when his parents owned the corner store. And when I would get my 50 cents, I would take a nickel and go to the corner store. And he would give me a bag full of candy, a whole bag full of candy for my nickel. And this started when I was six, he was about 10. And uh, just for years, you know, and he would chase me out the store. If other kids came in there, he would chase me out the store and stuff. And then we didn't see each other for a long time. And then uh, he came back around when I was 16. And uh, we started fooling around and stuff. And um, we got married. Horrible, horrible marriage. I went from a horrible house. I thought I was escaping one life and then to another. In 57, I graduated in 56. And I got the job at Madison Kip. I moved downtown in with Kathy and this, I don't know, another gal from Ryo. And that's when I met George. And we started dating. Of course, we were married in 60, 1960. We lived on Algoma Street when he started working at Oscar Meyer, so he could walk to work. And that's when Susan was born, on, when we lived on Myrtle Street, or on Algoma Street. And then George decided he had to have his own farm because, you know, he was always going every weekend up to Rio to the farm, so I we thought, well, might as well have our own farm. So that's when we bought the Marshall Farm. And David was born when we were out in Marshall after Susan was killed. He was cleaning out a chicken coop or a, a, some pen or a something and had the tractor and she was with him, helping him. It was, I don't know what year in high school he was, maybe junior. He got on the tractor and it was like an old Minneapolis where he had a hand clutch and she was behind it. And you know, the tractor, when he started it, he didn't take it out of gear. And the tractor just lurched back and she was in the way and got it. And it was a head injury and that was, you know, right. it been four. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, it was, yeah, that's... And Dad wasn't home? No, he was at work. He was at Oscar Mayer working. Yeah. Did the ambulance come or anything? Or did no, they just, I don't it was already too late when the yeah, police got there? Yeah, yeah. I think they just pronounced her dad at the, you know. We moved on to the farm like in oh, March or April, maybe, and that happened June 10th. So, yeah, I was pregnant with David. So then, yeah. David was born right before Christmas. Yeah. I think 
can survive tough times. <laughs> because my husband father was a woman beater and that's what he expected his son to be. And uh, he would beat me up in front of his parents while his parents were sitting on the couch like this. And I was like, again, I can't live like this. I can't take this. And But I was afraid to leave because I, I was afraid they would take my son away from me. And I left him and came, that's when I came to Milwaukee. I was 18 and I got my son and he, uh, he came up there. Unfortunately, my husband found out where I was. He came up there and I got pregnant again with my daughter. And I wonder every day how my two oldest children turn out to be as good as they did because they had a miserable mother. I was miserable, but I, I was not going to be with another man who beat me like my first husband did. And I had had enough between my grandmother and my first husband. I never wanted anybody to ever hit me again. So the well, first thing he did he, is he bought me. He gave me money constantly. He like, here, I, you need money. You need help raising those kids. I had my son and my daughter. He would buy me everything, buy things for my kids. Uh, so I was easily taken in by him. And I married him to find out he was an alcoholic. and. Uh, while he tried to beat me, I was not having it. <laughs> so, and meanwhile, I worked. I worked, uh, sure, I worked a lot of jobs. I worked at Sears. I worked at this little company stripping wires for uh, refrigerators and stuff, making $2.15 an hour. I can remember that. Uh, I worked uh, at Eden Corporation in Milwaukee. And, a couple of other places. I worked quite a few places in Milwaukee. I didn't get really into seriously thinking about becoming a teacher until uh, after I had, had Melissa, my baby, my youngest, and, and I went back to I went to MATC and they had this program. I can't remember what it said. Saying something about urban education, urban teacher education program or something. But I did all my courses at MATC, and I transferred to Madison, and uh, I did the, uh, the three-year program at uh, Madison, and I got hired straight into Sherman. I'm very proud of all of my children. You know, I think they probably grew up at a time where things were a little tough, and they had to learn to work, and they, they all, Mary was determined she was going to get a college degree and no matter what it took detasseling corn and <laughs> coming home with uh, carrying her shoes because she was so full of mud and they're all have their families and are are uh, at least uh they were certainly more educated than i was i had a high school education and that and they're all at least have uh a college education and well the most thing that brings the most joy into your life is your family and your children and your grandchildren and and that you know they're successful and they're all fairly healthy and I, I think maybe <laughs> raising the grandchildren or helping raise the grandchildren was uh, like they always say is more fun than <laughs> Not really, but it's a different, a different type of responsibility, I guess, is what. <laughs> I knew I had to do something in the school after my two younger girls were in school. They were in school, they were in middle school by the time I actually finished the program. But uh, once I got up here, came to Madison, I was like, you know, yeah, this is much better than Milwaukee. This is where I want to be. Plus, I was trying to get away from my ex-husband, mm -hmm. the second ex-husband, because he was crazy. Even taught, I went up in Einstein one day, and this girl was said, oh, that's Miss Madsen. She, she cussed me out. She the best teacher. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> and why did I cuss you out? <laughs> if I really cussed you out. <laughs> She said, Miss Benson, don't you know me? I said, 
Maybe not even. I wasn't in your class. I was in your girls' group. I had my girls' group. So a lot of girls that I didn't teach, they were in my girls' group and stuff. But I'm so glad to see so many of them successful. And so many boys who I thought were going to just mess up, you know, now being fathers and having jobs and doing things well, you know. And, uh, you know, even those who might have made mistakes were able to come back and do things different. So I, I'm really glad of that. That makes me happy, you know. When I've been sick and I did post it on Facebook, so many who like, you know, Miss Madison, what can I do for you? Can I bring you this? Can I bring you that? You know, and so willing to want to do things for me, you know, so, or even just take me to the doctor. Oh, wow. So I, I feel like I've, uh, I've entered into a community that's, all in compensate of me and mine and I could just call certain people and I know they will come and you know or do whatever you know if I need something they will help me or whatever or a lot of times that's I just want to eat uh, they'll just take me out to eat you know <laughs>